And that I, I feel like that was like the most effective of all of this whole study process. You and I, when I do it live. What's up you guys, it's Madonna, welcome back to my channel. So you guys, I've been wanting to make this video for you all for quite some time now, but I just bit the bullet and I mean, this is what works for me. Hopefully it can translate to working for you as well, but this is how I effectively study for PA school and that's what this video is gonna be about. You can always come back and rewatch this video if, you, um, if you'd like. And to do that, you can also subscribe to my channel right now and hit that notification button so you know exactly when I'm going to actually be putting a video up. But this video, um, I'm gonna give you just kind of like a start to finish of how I study for pretty much all of my classes in PA school. The backbone or the foundation of my study tips are pretty much the same for each class. There may be a little thing here or there that I switch up with respect to like anatomy and pathophysiology and pharmacology, things where I am more diagram prone or I wanna see a more visual aspect of what I'm dealing with, but for the most part, actually making my study guides and studying throughout the week is the same. So that is what I'm gonna give you the foundation of that. When I go into my med practice class and we're seeing the material for the first time, we're gonna have a PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is made available to us either the day before or the day of um, the particular class. But once that PowerPoint is made available to us, we pull it up, we're in class, and we'll go through the PowerPoint. And so now to go through the PowerPoint, we're going through it with the teacher. So my professor is telling us different information and in that information, um, the PowerPoints is up on the screen as well. So I always take notes. I, I take my notes by hand because I just think it's more important for you to actually like write stuff down. It helps it stick better for me, but also with respect to note taking, when you're typing your notes out, it's easier to just kind of write things verbatim. But when you're writing it out by hand, you have to really pick and choose what is important. And you can kind of like dwindle down on some of that information as well and hone into exactly what is important um, and what you're going to take from the information that your teacher is giving you. When we're going through the PowerPoints, I am writing all of this information down by hand. Now I'm not writing every single thing that's listed on the PowerPoint. Uh, our professors do a really good job to either bold or italicize or um, underline or highlight different things that are important that you need as a takeaway from this particular subject matter. So I make sure that I write that information down, but also if there's something that my professor is stressing in their um, audio, like their their actual like speech that they're telling us, then I will write that information down as well. We'll go through that throughout the whole class and I'll take notes, I'll write all of that down. And then from those handwritten notes, I go home and I make my study guide. So when I'm going through and making my study guide, I go through the PowerPoint again. Um, and I also listen to the audio version because they make a video um, and you have access to the video of all the lectures. So you can always go back and listen and watch the lectures. So I, I do that as well um, so that I'm able to now again, after I've taken a step back, I've gotten more information from other classes, I can come back and rewrite everything that I've done, but in a study guide form. And so when I make my study guide, again, I'm going through the, um, the PowerPoints and the actual audio and, and the video that was already recorded. And I'm looking for anything that I may have missed when I was writing and I will add that into my actual study guide. So when I'm making my study guide, I do the exact same thing where I write the subject matter that I'm talking about. And then I like to have little vignettes. So I like to pretend and see like, oh, this is a patient coming in with XYZ symptoms. And what is it? Just to kind of help me think uh, through the process of this is what I might see in the actual emergency department or in OB 
or in cardiology if that is the section that I'm in. Um, once I write my vignette, I will write down the symptoms, I'll write down the diagnosis, I'll talk about the treatment. Um, for some diseases, I talk about like prevalence. Um, those are things that are just added information that I want for myself, but that's not necessarily something that I'm gonna be tested on. Once I make my study guide, then I use that study guide at home like throughout the rest of the week to actually study. Um, I don't, like no longer do I really look at the PowerPoint or listen to um, and look at the video recording that was made. I use my study guide for all of my studying um, along with my handy dandy book, Pants Prep Pearls. You guys have seen me talk about this book many times, um, but it's the same thing with pants. It also does like bold, italicized, underlined, starred, asterisk, however you want to call it. Um, it puts all of that information in there so that you are able to see exactly um, what is important, what are the pearls that you want to take away from this, and um, anything that you may have missed from your teachers or your professor's uh, lecture, you can also pick that up in pants. I always make sure, though, that Whatever my professor is teaching me, that's what I am like actually really taking home because sometimes pants is more clinical. That's what you're going to see and how you're going to treat in the clinical world, but it doesn't always translate with like academics. So it's important to understand how you can find that dynamic and, and pick out that information if that is something that um, is also done at your school. So after I make my study guide and I use my study guide to st study throughout the week, um, my classes in didactic year usually ended at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. So I would have maybe about four to five hours, sometimes six hours to study depending on, you know, the time that I'm spending with my family and my kids and, you know, what I'm doing if I'm trying to like, you know, go out somewhere and actually have a break from PA school for for a little bit and then come back and study. And I broke down my studying depending on was there um, an exam that week or in two weeks coming up? Was there a quiz that I had to actually study for? Was this a class that I was struggling a little bit more in than another class? Did I expect to get an A in this class? And if so, um, you know, maybe I can devote a little bit less time to that particular class and more time to this. So those are all factors that played into how I would study. Have you seen any of my study? with me videos you see that I usually do like a I study for a block period of time and then I take a break and then I come back and I study again um, that was just effective for me so I would break my studying up like that and then from that I would then decide if I'm spending more time on this particular subject matter or not. After I was done with my study guide and my studying for the week, then it came time for like the quiz or the test or whatever it is that I would be studying for. And that's where I used my like teach back method. So for me, um, I would spend time at school where we have all these like whiteboards where you can write all over the whiteboards. And then I also had like a whiteboard for my kid. Well, it's like a whiteboard, not really a whiteboard. It's like greenish, grayish, like frosted glass board, but whatever. So I have like a whiteboard from Ikea um, that I would use and then just kind of paper as well. So when I'm at school and if I'm with my small group of friends that I actually study with, um, and by small, I mean like two to three, like no more than that, because then it just gets crazy. Um, but if I'm studying with them, then we would teach each other the subject matter. And that I, I feel like that was like the most effective of all of this whole study process, the teach back, because you have to know the material to teach it back to someone, right? And if you don't have all of it down, like maybe there was something that even in all of the studying that you've done, you missed, your friends can kind of teach you and help you and say, oh, but this is important, or, you know, Professor X said this, so you should actually like add that to your notes just in case it comes up on the exam. So I would do that with like my friends, I'd do it with, you know, my imaginary class, and then I'd do it with like my little dog, it's a key of puppy time, because um, I, I want to be able and be just like really, really um, proficient and efficient in that material and in that subject matter. So. I would go through and I would teach back my my information. So if we were talking about like 
testicular torsion. Um, that's where I would go in at, because you've seen me, I've, I've written the notes, I've listened to the PowerPoints, I've gone through the PowerPoints, and then now it's time to teach back. So torsion, you know, it's a medical emergency and with that being said, you know that it's important that you're able to effectively diagnose it. So you have to know the symptoms that the patient's gonna come in with. Are they gonna be like, they're gonna be nauseous, the pain is gonna be sudden, um, and torsion in and of itself is a twisting of the contents of the spermatic cord. So you have to be able to explain that and what that means. So that is what I would do, um, and that's how I, I would go through my process. So I go through the PowerPoints, I make my little notes, I make my study guide, I study, and then I teach it back. And that has been so effective for me because it is essential. It's like really, really good to memorize this information, but make sure that it's in a format on which you can actually memorize it. Like you're getting all of this information in PA school and you have to break it down into something that is actually gonna stick in your head. So that is it. That is how I effectively study for PA school and this can be done across the board. Hopefully it is as efficient for you as it is for me and um, hopefully this is very helpful for you guys. Thank you for this question. If you have any other questions, you want to see me uh, make a video on anything else, go ahead and leave that in the comments section below right now. Um, like this video and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA, and I will talk to you guys next time.